Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
I don't know about you, but I need the spirit to break out. Hallelujah. I need the spirit to break out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Um, I was standing up because that's my youngest daughter. Amen. So we give God glory. Amen. And so I just want to tell you a little story. When, about 20 years ago, when she was about six or seven, we would go to the beach and sometimes at night we would walk along the beach and all of a sudden she would just break out running down the beach. And so I would catch her and then she would get loose again and break out running again. And my son DJ would catch her. My daughter, my oldest daughter's here. She remember that. And, and we, everybody, would, but she was breaking out and just running. Sometimes we need the spirit of the Lord to break out and go before us and take care of some stuff before we get there. Because the spirit of God knows exactly what we need to have done in our life. So you need to say, look, let the spirit of God break out. Stop trying to keep God in a box. Listen to me, Facebook. God is not in a box. He's not in a jar, but God wants to break out in your life. Amen? He wants to go before you, making the crooked places straight. Amen. Perfecting everything he needs to perfect in your life. So we are grateful. I'm going to ask you again. This is going to be a message, amen, that I, I struggled with. I was, I was going to preach it last week, but I didn't preach it last week. And so it was impressed upon me to preach it this week. So we're going to um, preach it this week. And so we are grateful, amen. We have two passages of scripture that we're going to reference this morning. I'm going to ask to, amen, please share this. Please like and share this. And I was also asking you, please register to vote. I think the voting deadline is the 1st of October, around about the 8th. But I'm not quite sure the date. But you want to see some information on your screen. Amen. Our admin is going to post some information on your screen. Or we can go to the North Carolina voter registration and register to vote in your particular county. Amen. Let me tell you something that is so important about you voting is that people die so that you can have a right to vote. And so I'm going to admonish you, amen, to use your voice, amen, in this election. It is, it is pivotal. This is this is crucial that you go out and vote, amen. And so, amen, if you have to pick up somebody, put on a mask and pick up somebody and take them to the polls. But we got to get all souls to the polls, amen. So I'm going to ask you to do that, amen. But let's go to the Word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, and then we'll be at Joshua 24, verse 15. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, so grateful for all of the saints who are here this morning, amen. Amen, some new faces we see, so we're grateful for that, amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, Amen. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. And Joshua is the writer here, and he's speaking. He says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I want to use for a thought this morning combining those two verses. You cannot be righteous and racist. You cannot be righteous and racist. Amen. Mm -hmm. I told you it's going to be tough, but it's all right. We're going to get through it together. Let us pray. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Father, your word is already blessed. But bless the messenger, Lord, as I deliver your word. Father, take me out of it, Lord. But Father, let me speak a word that is relevant to this situation that we're dealing with in society. God, I thank you right now that you would have unctionized me by the power of the Holy Ghost. And Father, I thank you that those that are listening, Lord, will share this message with those that they come into contact with. And Father, I ask right now that your word would go forth, that it would convince, convict, and convert. Father, I thank you right now that the word of God declares that the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. And all of God's people said amen. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Facebook for joining us this morning. Thank you for our B Church. Amen. Our virtual church, our victorious church who watch us online and through YouTube. We're so grateful. Amen. You cannot be righteous and racist. Now, 
The word righteous is defined as acting in accord with divine or moral law. It is to be free from guilt or sin. Now the word righteousness means to be in right standing with God. So you're in right standing with God. Now the word racism is defined as a belief that race is the fundamental determinant of human traits and capacities and that racial differences produce an inherent superiority of a particular race. Another definition of racism is the systemic oppression of a racial group to the social, economic, and political advantages of another. Amen. So as we look at the definition of righteous, which says we act in accord with divine law, then we look at the definition of racism, which says I oppress a particular racial group based primarily on their ethnic orientation, then when we look at the two words, we can see that they are juxtaposed to one another. In other words, you cannot be righteous and still maintain a racist point of view. It is just not possible, amen? So if I espouse the views that my race is superior than your race, if I believe that, then I will deny you the fundamental rights and privileges that the Declaration of Independence declares I have a right to enjoy. Now, most of the time when you hear people talking about amen, evangelicals that are not of our race, when they talk about uh, the framers of the Constitution or our forefathers, they will use their words that are outlined in the Constitution. So this morning, can we use some of those same words that are outlined in the Declaration of Independence? Now, they may have never meant the Declaration of Independence to include people of color, but I believe that the Holy Ghost meant for it too. Amen? That's what the Lord says. It says. Now, the Declaration of Independence says this. It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men, somebody say all, that all men are created equal. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, as African Americans, we're just trying to enjoy the first one, which is life. Because the others don't matter if I can't enjoy life or I don't have access to life. Amen. But long before the Declaration of Independence was ever written, Jesus gave us a Declaration of Independence. Jesus says in John 8, 36, he said, If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen. So when I am spiritually free, I have a responsibility, amen, as one who has been made righteous by the indwelling power of the Holy Ghost. I have a responsibility to help others to be free, Amen. If I am righteous, glory to God, I cannot see injustice and not say something or do something. Amen? I'm going to take my time this morning. Amen. Amen. The famous civil rights leader, John Lewis, said, when you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, you have to speak up. You have to say something. You have to do something. Amen? amen. My fellow brother in ministry that may be watching me this morning. Amen? Glory to God, my fellow brother, let me encourage you, glory to God. What we see happening in these United States, come on somebody, we have to, glory to God, we have a moral obligation to speak up, to say something, and then to do something. Amen. Edmund Burke said this, and I thought this to be very profound, he said, the only thing evil needs to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Glory to God. So I know there are good men and women in this nation preaching the gospel, but you may not even fully understand our struggle, our fight as African Americans, but because you're righteous, you know the difference between right and wrong. Hear me when I preach, amen? Because you're righteous and not racist, you may not fully understand our plight, but when you see evil being perpetrated, glory to God, you have a responsibility to stand on the side of what's right, even if it costs you something, amen? Now, African Americans, I need society to hear me and understand this. We don't want people to pity, pity us, amen? But what we would like to see happening is that you would empathize with us. Now, what's the difference between empathy and pity? Empathy is when you acknowledge the pain of an individual and you share in their feelings. So when you see me dealing with the fact that my sons, glory to God, my daughters, are being 
systematically targeted and then killed, glory to God, don't ask what they were doing wrong that caused the incident. Glory to God. When you're righteous and not racist, you will say, I've never had a child killed by the police who have been sworn to protect them, glory to God. But I will empathize with you. I will stand with you. I will stand on the side of what's right, glory to God, until you get the justice that I know you deserve. Amen? Amen. So let's get into the Bible before I get in too much trouble. But Joshua is telling the children of Israel, he said, look, glory to God, you got a choice to make. You got a choice to make, glory to God. You can serve the Lord your God, or you can serve the gods of the inhabitants of the land. You can serve the true and living God, hallelujah, or you can adopt the traits, the habits, and the characteristics of the inhabitants of the land. You have to choose one or the other. You cannot serve both. Come on, somebody. We have church leaders and political leaders who say they serve God. But how can you serve God and adopt the traits, the habits, and the characteristics of the land? You're afraid to call out wrong because you don't want to offend your political party. You're afraid to call out wrong because you don't want to offend your religious organization. Glory to God. But I stopped by to tell you that you cannot be righteous and racist. No, no, no. Jesus didn't die for a political party. No, sir. He didn't die for a religious organization. Watch this. Jesus died for people. Amen. And you've got to love people more than you love your religious organization or even your political affiliation. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, God has always been a God of exclusivity. Now, what I mean by that is that salvation is inclusive of all, glory to God. But how you serve God is exclusive. Amen. Oh, stay with me. Anyone can come to God for salvation. For he said, whosoever will, let him come. But once you are saved, then he has an order, a prescription of how you have to serve. Glory to God. You cannot do whatever you want and say you're serving God. It don't work like that. Come on now. Even on your job. You can't go on your job and do whatever you want and say you're still an employee of the company. No, they have SOP, standard operating procedure. Now, if your job has standard operating procedures, you know your God does, all right? So once you are saved and declared righteous, then you have to serve God. Or how you serve God must be exclusive. Let me give you an example. I was going to use somebody else, but I use myself. I'm married to First Lady. But after a while, I decided I want to go out with Sister Sally. And I hope nobody's name is Sally this watching. <laughs> but I decided that I want to go out with Sister Sally. Uh -huh. <laughs> but in, <laughs> in the words of Scooby Doo, a <laughs> that ain't going to work. <laughs> Once I married First Lady, watch this now. My love, my devotion, my time, my service, my energy is exclusively devoted to her. Amen. Once you are saved, your energy, your time, help me out, your money, is devoted and exclusively deserving to God. Amen. Amen? So, once you are declared righteous, you have to abandon racist ways. You have to abandon racist rhetoric and thoughts, glory to God. You belong exclusively to God. So when we look at, when we look at Joshua this morning, and I'm preaching that. Joshua is a strong, bold leader, glory to God, who, who asks or proposes the question to the nation of Israel. He says, who are you going to serve? Joshua is such the, is such the quintessential leader that this is what Joshua does. He doesn't wait for them to answer. He says, you do what you want to do, but as for me and my house, glory to God, hallelujah, we're going to serve the Lord, hallelujah. Don't watch this. Don't let your children run your house, but you run your house. Mm -hmm. No, you don't want to go to church, but you're going to sit outside until I get back home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because as for me and my house, we're going to serve the devil. Oh, my God. We're going to serve the Lord. So, but I wonder if there are any poli political leaders, glory to God, or leaders bold enough to say, regardless of my religion or political affiliations, regardless of my ethnic orientation, I'm going to serve the law. And because I'm going to serve the law, I'm going to do what's right. Amen. 
Watch this. When you're righteous and not racist, you're not more concerned with a building being burned than with the issues that led to the building being burned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm righteous and not racist, I understand that a human life is more important than a building. Let me give you a Bible. Watch this. Jesus said, destroy this temple. And in three days, I'll raise it up again. Guess what the sanctimonious religious leaders were concerned about? They were concerned about the building the temple. But Jesus was talking about his body. Amen. You got to love the body of Christ more than you do your political organization. What's wrong with you? Glory to God. I told you I had to share this one. Glory to God. So the religious leaders were more concerned with the building that they called the temple. But Jesus was concerned about his body. Glory to God. So, now, I want you to understand, do not condone looting or rioting, but human beings are more important than a building. How can you be more outraged at a burning building than you are of those who kneel on the neck of a man for almost nine minutes until the light ebbed out of his body? You're more outraged, <laughs> glory to God, about a building being burned than you are about a life being lost. Y'all are going to hear me this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me show you something. In 1963, I did some little history. In 1963, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. wrote a letter from the Birmingham jail. And in the letter, he says, and I quote, Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. He says, We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. He goes on to say, to those who complained about the demonstrators and the demonstrations, you deplore the demonstrations, but your statement, I am sorry to say, fails to express similar concerns about the issues that led to the demonstration. This letter was written over 57 years ago, but we have leaders today that still have the same mindset. They're more upset with the demonstrations and the demonstrators than they are with the issues that led to it. Mm -mm, we got to change, glory to God. So in this nation, glory to God, how can you be more empathetic towards a police officer who shoots a man in the back six or seven times, glory to God, hallelujah, and didn't have the audacity to say it was self-defense when we have video evidence that proves otherwise? Yes, <laughs> how are you more empathetic to police officers who storm into a home of a young lady, glory to God, to issue a no lock shoot her eight times, glory to God, to death. Yeah. How are we more outraged, glory to God, hallelujah, by the, by the crimes being committed than we are to the people who are committing them? Something is wrong, glory to God. You can be empathetic towards those who commit those crimes and not towards the victims. Again, I use my stupid new voice. Uh -huh. Something's wrong. We, the reason we say Black Lives Matter, and well, when we say Black Lives Matter, you get all in an uproar. You all upset. You mad. Glory to God. But the reason we say Black Lives Matter is because those are the lives that are being targeted and eliminated. So that's why we speak up and say it. Because you don't even see it. Glory to God. You don't even acknowledge it. We always say this in the kingdom of God. We deal more with the fruit than we do with the root. We got to deal with the root and that'll stop the fruit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, black lives, watch this. Black lives matter because we are God's creation. If you love the creator, then you love his creation. Glory to God. If you love God, you'll love your black, black brother, your black sister. You'll love your brown brother, your brown sister. If you love God. Amen. Am I right about it? So you have to be told this morning that you cannot be righteous and racist. Can I go deeper? Mm -hmm. It's quiet in here. That's all right. Some of y'all nervous. So with, with your poll, so when you get back to work, it's all right. Go ahead, Bishop. You wish you could go back, get that share, and bring it back. It's out there now. <laughs> Can we go deeper? Go ahead, Bishop. We have Christians who say they are pro life, they believe in the right to life for a fetus. Now, I think as Christians, we should all espouse that view. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. But however, in addition to that, in my opinion, pro-life also means that all life 
expressions, including black life. Mm. Don't tell me you value life in the womb and that you will march and you will protest the life that's in the womb. But you get quiet when a black life is being eliminated. Glory to God. Now, if, if that is your point of view, then you are racist and not righteous. Life, watch this, write this down somewhere. Life is important from the womb to the tomb. Amen. Don't tell me that a fetus, glory to God, is more important than a life that's already here. You have that view if you only are concerned with life that is of your persuasion. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I know it's going to be tight. Yeah. But the Apostle Paul says this in 2 Corinthians. He says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, we all used to be something. Before we got saved, we were all something. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some of us used to run drugs. Some of us used to run women. Some of us used to run our mouths. Mm -hmm. Some of us still do that, but that's all right. <laughs> but we all used to be something. So we're not judging you based on what you used to be. But once you are in Christ, you are a new creature. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So there may have been a time when you had racist views. But now through the power of the Holy Ghost, glory to God, hallelujah, you have been made righteous. And so you have to let go of the old and embrace the new. Come on, somebody. Amen. Now, my message this morning, glory to God, is for those who say they are righteous to stand with us. If you say you are righteous, then you have an obligation. Remember when we read the definition? You have an obligation to moral law, divine law. You have an obligation to stand with us. Now, this is what I need you to understand, too. We're going to stand with or without you. That's, that's, you know, I don't want you to be confused by that. We're going to stand with or without you. But I need, also need you to understand that if you don't stand with us now, you'll have to stand before somebody else later. And he'll ask you, what did you do concerning this particular issue? So you can either stand now. <laughs> hallelujah. Glory to God. So let's, let's go deeper. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. You know it's wrong now. You know it's wrong. You know it's wrong. For someone to gas their own people for the sake of a photo opportunity. You know that's wrong. You know it's wrong. To call your fellow citizens thugs and lowlifes and losers. Simply because they have a different view than you or a different skin color than you. That's wrong. If you didn't know, let me tell you right now. That's wrong. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, I'm about done. Glory to God. But years ago, there was a huge movement. There was a huge movement, and it was titled, amen, it was, it was done in Christian circles, and it was titled WWJD. And the emphasis was, what would Jesus do? That's what it stood for. What would Jesus do? So, as I prepare to take my seat, I gotta ask the question: What would Jesus do? Huh? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can I ask that question this morning? What would Jesus do? Hallelujah. What would Jesus do concerning the murder of George Floyd? The murder of Breonna Taylor, the murder of Ahmaud Arbery. What would Jesus do concerning the murder of Eric Garner? The murder of Michael Brown, the murder of Stephon Clark. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do concerning the murder of Freddie Gray, the murder of Rashad Brooks? What would Jesus do? So that was the question a few years ago. But my question to you this morning, Facebook, is what are you willing to do? Glory to God. Hallelujah. What are you going to do about racism? Hallelujah. What are you going to do about inequities? What are you going to do about unequal justice? What are you going to do? Hallelujah. Are you going to sit back and be silent? Hallelujah. This is what I understand about I want you 
you to pray, but then I want you to get up and pray.
work. There are little things that are said that you know that are subtle racism. Subtle racism. But we know how to deal with it. Especially as believers. We know how to believe and trust God. So watch this. Can you imagine now my great, great grandmother if she could see us now having the right and the opportunity to go vote. Something that she was denied all her life. She could only accept what was given to her. My grandmother would go uptown and for Caucasian people she would watch their children do their laundry and clean their house. But when she sees that her grandson has an opportunity to go to the polls and make a difference, how dare you deny? Yes. When you go to the poll, all my ancestors go to the polls. They go to the poll with you. Because you get to do what they could not do. We didn't understand what President
Amen. Hey, baby, I'll be home shortly.